I want to quickly talk about IRS Form W-9 line-by-line -line instructions. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you're to ask me. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today's combo will be very interesting. We're talking about Iris Forum W9. When you start a new job, there is a lot of paperwork to fill out, right? I'm talking about to write deposit documents and benefits enrollment to your W4 form. But when you are a contractor or self-employed person, Income taxes work a little differently, so you will still have to report your earnings to the IRS, and the companies that use your services will have to report those earnings too. That's where the W-9 form comes in. So what is it? The, the title of form, uh, the official title of form W-9 is uh, Request for Taxpayer Identification Number and Certification. So employers use this form to get the TIN, the tax identification number, the taxpayer identification number from uh, contractors, freelancers, and vendors. And the W-9 also provides other personally ad identifying information like your name and address. Okay. And the form, if you really think about it, this form acts as an agreement that you, as a contractor or freelancer, are responsible for withholding taxes from your income. So when you're a full-time employee, your employer withholds some of your income to cover federal income taxes and uh, FICA taxes, which include Medicare and Social Security taxes, right? Now, employers don't make that withholding for contractors. So the, the, the Form W-9 records the uh, tax ID numbers for workers who are not employees, and it records the statement of the person completing the form, swearing that the taxpayer identification number is correct. This could be your social or your, the EIN for your business, that the uh, the taxpayer is not subject to backup withholding. You know, backup withholding really is required withholding by employers for individuals who have not included a valid taxpayer identification number on uh, the form uh, W-9. So backup withholding is implemented at a rate of 24%, 24, 25% as of 2020 and 2021. And uh, you also have to uh, attest that the individual is a U.S. citizen or other U.S. person, that any FATCA, in other words, uh, Foreign Account Tax Complaint Act codes on the form are correct. And FATCA reports are required of U.S. citizens to report foreign financial assets held outside of the United States. And uh, one thing I want to say here is that at the end of the tax year, the business you did work for will use the information on your W-9 to complete a 1099 miscellaneous or a 1099 NEC NEC. And this form outlines all the payments made to you. And uh, for example, a financial institution may also require you to report interest, dividends, and capital gains earned by, um, uh, by you as one of their customers. One thing I want to say here is that most of the time though, a company or a financial institution will send you a blank W form to complete before you begin business with them. And uh, yeah, so you can also download the form on the IRS website. So basically, who has to fill it out? So W-9 forms are for self-employed workers like freelancers, independent contractors, and consultants. And you need to use it if you have earned over, if you've earned over $600, that's the threshold here, that's the floor rather, $600 in, in a year, in a tax year, without being hired as an employee. So if your employer sends you a W-9 instead of W-4, the company has likely classified you as an independent contractor. So you want to confirm with the company that this is the case because basically knowing your status can help you plan your tax return. And uh, the W-9 form allows businesses to keep track of uh, their external workforce, right? That means you don't send if you don't send your W-9 form to the IRS, I mean, to the if you don't send it back to the employer, you cannot start working. You're not sending the W-9 form to the IRS. You're sending it to the employer or to your supervisor or the company's human resources department. And if you did multiple jobs for multiple companies, 
you could fill out a number of W-9 forms in the same year. And you also will have to submit new W-9 forms anytime you change your name, business name, address, or text ID number. And uh, basically, uh, Form W-9 is necessary for a lot of uh, cases. And what I'm trying to say here is that um, the um, you must get a W-4 form for non-employees. Okay, so independent contractors, freelancers, and others before the person is hired and before work begins. I meant W-9 form, not W-4, W-9. And beginning in 2020, the information on the W-9 is used to complete a 1099 NEC reporting non-employee income for a tax year, like a W-2 for, non -em for employees. So the 1099 NEC is the equivalent of the W-2 for employees. Okay, and uh, Form W-9 is also used to report real estate transactions, mortgage interest, acquisition or abandonment of secured property, cancellation of debt, and contribution to an IRA. And one thing I also want to say here is that the employer must also include the appropriate taxpayer identification number on each payment to the non-employee, and the total of all payments for the year must be included on the Form 1099 NEC that's provided to the worker and to the IRS. So I was speaking earlier about W-4 and uh, how is w how is Form W-4 distinct from Form W-9? Form W-9 for non-employees is comparable to Form W-4 for employees, the employee's withholding certificate. You will need to fill out a W-4 when you just started a new job at a full, as a full-time employee or your financial situation has changed while still remaining a full-time employee, right? We have uh, covered that uh, the concept of W-4 on another show, so you might, you might want to double-check that. A W-4 form requires some of the same information as a W-9, like your name, address, and social. This forms also request information on tax exemptions, so employers use the completed W-4 to determine how much to withhold from your paycheck for federal income taxes. Right now, since an employer doesn't withhold income taxes for contract and freelance employees, W 9 forms don't request that info. And the difference between a 1099 and W 9 the 1099 and W 9 forms go hand in hand, okay? Because independent contractors will fill out the W 9 to confirm their tax responsibilities and provide information to their employers. Employer or employers really depends. In turn, employers use a, a contractor's W-9 to complete a 1099 detailing the worker's income. And there are, as of the date of this show, there are 18 different 1099 forms, each one relating to the nature of the income. So this includes freelance or contract income, but also real estate sales earnings, debt cancellation, pension contributions, and more. So the amount basically that you need to report depends on the type of income, starting as low as $10 for interest gains and reaching up to $20,000 for special credit card transactions. Okay, and uh, where do you get to your Form W-9? In most cases, the business you are contracting with will send you a blank W-9 and ask you to complete it. And you can also download it on the internet from the IRS website. And uh, if you don't receive a W-9, if you're an independent contractor and you don't receive it from a company you've done uh, more than $600 worth of work for, or if you or your company is in a position of having to issue Forms W-9 to independent contractors, again, go to the IRS website to download the form. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Studio Kiwi Show. We are now into the nitty-gritty. How do you fill out a W-9 form? I want you to look at the screen right now. We have the form on the screen, and filling out a W-9 is pretty straightforward. The form itself is not even an entire page long, excluding the instructions, of course. So the business that hires you should fill in its name and employer identification number, EIN, and you'll then fill out the form line by line, okay? So line one, you have the name. Pretty, pretty simple. This should be your full name, and it should really match the name on your 1040, on your individual tax return. Line to the business name. So if you have a business name, 
DBA name or disregarded entity name or even trade name, fill it in here. If you don't have a business, you can just leave this blank. Line three, you have a federal tax classification. Now, this is very important. It defines how you, the independent contractor, is classified when it comes to federal taxes. You will check the first box if you're filing as an, as an individual, sole proprietor, or a single member LLC. In other words, as a single member limited liability company owned by an individual and disregarded for U.S. federal tax purposes. And uh, a sole proprietor business operates under the owner's social security number and it has not been registered as another type of business. And taxes applies to single member LLCs in the same way. All right. And actually, the other boxes correspond to C Corporation, S Corporation, Partnership and Trust slash estate businesses. OK. And remember that the limited liability company box is for a partnership or LLC businesses with multiple members. And in a line four on line four, you have uh, exemptions. Can you see that? Now, you don't need to fill to, to fill in this section as an individual because only certain businesses or entities with any reason for exemption will need to fill out this basis. And this, if this applies to you, though, you will need to provide a number or letter code that indicates that reason. Again, you want to talk to your attorney or to your tax accountant to be to be uh, sure about how to uh, categorize your, your, your company or yourself in this section. If your entity is exempt from backup withholding, you will fill in the first line with your code, and this should apply to most entities. However, if your business is not, the company who hired you for your services will need to withhold income tax from your pay at a flat rate of 24% and send it to the IRS. And this is uh, in the uh, in accounting jargon, this is known as backup withholding. And if you are exempt from reporting required by the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, the FATCA, you will fill in the second line. All right. And this is basically uh, th the latter only applies if you hold your accounts outside the United States. So basically, if you maintain your account in the U.S., guess what? You can leave the second line blank or just write non applicable any. And if you are unsure about your exemptions, page three of the form outlines the situations that would make you exempt. So moving on, for folks, we're still uh, on line five and six. So on the form, as you can see on the screen, so line five requires the address. You So you put your number, the, the number, the street, the apartment number, where your employer will mail your information returns. And line six leaves a space for you to enter the city, state, and zip code of the address. No problem. Go ahead and do it. Line seven, you have the account number. Now, this is basically, an, it's optional. This is where you can fill in any numbers, any account numbers your employer may need. And uh, most individuals can leave this blank. So part one. So we have a taxpayer identification number. So, so the TIN. Now you have two options in this section. Okay. Can you see that? So you can either enter your social security number or your employer identification number. Typically you provide your social if you file as an individual or single member ALC. As I said earlier, if you use your EIN, then you are filing as a multi-member LLC classified as a, as a corporation or partnership. If you are a sole proprietor, you could use either number, but your social is preferable. And if you are a resident alien and you're not eligible for a social, you should use your IRS identif uh, individual taxpayer identification number, your ITIN. And again, you may want to check with your tax advisor, your CPA, your EA, or you want to contact the IRS directly to double check your information. Because providing an incorrect TIN can cause issues with your payment of ta or tax return. It can also lead to future backup withholding. All right. So this is uh, an important thing. And the one thing I want to say here also is that it's very important to understand that if you are um, if you're a sole proprietor, it's better to enter your your um, your Social Security number, even if you have an EIN. And uh, it, because if you're a sole owner of an LLC or your sole because the, the uh, categorization applies similarly to the sole owner of, of an LLC. So if you are a sole owner of an LLC, in other words, if you are a single member LLC, you're probably considered a disregarded entity for tax purposes, right? Now, the designation may sound complicated, but it just applies to single member LLCs. In other words, in almost every case, you will enter your personal social security number, not the EIN of the, of the LLC. 
And um, if uh, one thing I want to say here is that if your business is a corporation, as corporation or partnership, you want to enter the business EIN. Okay, in part two, basically you need to, uh, part two is about certifications. And uh, this is very important. A lot of um, a lot of freelancers take this very lightly, but you shouldn't. You must certify that the info that you provided is correct, especially as it relates to your taxpayer identification number, your exemption from backup withholding, and your FATCA reporting status. And because if the info is not correct or you included false information, you could be charged with a crime. And so you want to read and follow the certification instructions carefully. So in part one, you want to fill in your TIN, you want to sign and date. Part two, you are certifying to the IRS that the TIN you are providing is correct. You are also basically certifying that you are a U.S. citizen or other U.S. person, that any quotes that you enter are correct, and that you are not subject to backup withholding. Now, the IRS defines a U.S. person as one of the following. So you have an individual who is a U.S. citizen or U.S. resident alien, a partnership, a corporation, a company, or association created or organized in the United States or under the laws of the United States. You also can, a U.S. person can also be a domestic state or a domestic trust. So if you are subject to, let's say, to back up withholding, you would have received a notice from the IRS informing you of that fact, and the company paying you would have to withhold 24% of your payment in federal income taxes. There are two main reasons why you might be subject to backup withholding. So that's why I really want you to pay attention because you can actually uh, avoid that. Either you, you previously had not provided your correct TIN, your taxpayer identification number, or you failed to report or underreported your interest and dividend income on your federal income tax return. So if you are subject to backup withholding, you really want to go ahead right now and cross out item two under certification before signing the W-9. And uh, the IRS recommends you quickly correct your TIN or the underreporting and pay the amount you owe. Okay, so this is basically it. So the certification, so now uh, where it says sign here, this is where you sign and date the form indicating that you have provided your accurate information. Again, remember that form W-9 is a legal document. So it is important to read and follow all instructions carefully. Keep your safety in mind when completing and sending a w, uh, W9 because, you know, this is your private information. So before you even fill it out, you want to verify that the request for your form is legitimate. And besides, make sure to send the, complete, the, the completed form properly. You can use uh, a secure method of delivery like you can uh, email. Of course, it has to be encrypted. You can use hand delivery. You can use certified mail with uh, with uh, receipt confirmation, all right? Because the bottom line here is you you don't want to have your data accidentally landing in the hands of the wrong people. Another thing I want to talk about here is that the uh, are there any potential problems with Form W-9? Form W-9, if you really think about it, is a standard tax document. So by itself, it doesn't pose any problem, right? But there are a few situations that might have, that might actually wave a red flag. For example, you don't know the person or business that is asking you to fill out the W-9. In this case, you should always exercise caution, folks. Always. When giving out sensitive info like your sin. Make sure you know who is asking you to fill the form, why they're doing so, and how the information you supply will be used. You also, if you are allowing someone to access your private information, this could be this could be a cause for red flag waving. Don't send your completed W-9 as an unsecured or unencrypted email attachment. So you always want to use a secure method of delivery. Very important, folks. You want to use something like hand delivery, a U.S. mail, or an encrypted file in, in an email. I already said that. Very important. And uh, there also could be a situation where you expected a Form W-4 instead. So let's say you are just starting a new job and your employer hands you a W-9 to fill out. You want to ask whether you'll be working as a self-employed independent contractor or as an employee. Because as I said earlier, the distinction is very important. Employees complete Form W-4, not Form W-9, to set their tax withholdings. 
and you're generally not considered to be an independent contractor if your employer controls when, where, and how you do your job, and when and how you are paid, and if the job provides any sort of employee benefits. And so, how often do you need to update your Form W-9? You should submit a new Form W-9 whenever any information you provided on the previous one has changed. So you want to you fill out a new form if your name, business name, address, social security number, or employer identification number has changed. So folks, what are the key takeaways here? The bottom line here is that Form W-9 is an IRS form that is filled out by self-employed workers, gig economy workers, freelancers, for companies they are providing services for. This form is sent to the company that requested it, not the IRS. So companies use uh, W-9s to file Form 1099-NEC or Form 1099 miss, both of which notify the IRS how much they have paid to non-employees during the tax year. So the bottom line, the main goal, the main purpose of the W-9 is to provide your correct taxpayer ID number to the company you are contracting with. All right, folks, this is the end of today's conversation. I want to quickly recap uh, the main topics here. I explained to you what is a W-9 form, who has to fill it out, when is the form necessary, how are, how is a W-4 distinct from a W-9, what is the difference between a 1099 and W-9, where do you get form W-9, what you should do if you don't receive a W-9, how do you fill out a W-9, line by line instructions, and whether there are any potential problems with form W-9, and how often you should update form W-9. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.